So let's just say that uh, I'm not hopeful because I choose not to get caught in the ambush of hope. And in Buddhist teaching, hope is always forever accompanied by fear. Fear that you won't get what you're hoping for or that you will fail. And so there is a place described as the place beyond hope and fear where you're not attached to outcomes, but you're just engaged in doing what feels like the work you're supposed to be doing. And so when I talk about and work with communities, it's the rediscovery of we have what we need. It wasn't what we thought we needed. We have what we need in ourselves and in our land and in our environment and in our culture. And just to rediscover that, that's always a completely energizing moment, not only for people, but for me to observe as well. It's like, well, finally we're rediscovering human capacity. You know, how we are able to maintain our strength and our commitment and our courage are the questions that I'm in, not about hope. This is why I wrote the book Perseverance, is because I saw so many people whose work I admired and many of them were friends and colleagues, I just saw as being taken down or taken out by circumstances and having to go into a meeting every few hours in which there's just conflict or outrageous behavior or nobody really willing to sit and think together. I mean, that's stressful enough. And then, you know, outside events or influences or outside government policies making these absolutely insane decisions um, supposedly to support us, but actually that destroy our capacity. So you have to deal with that craziness. And then our kids are more stressed, our partners are more stressed. So where, you know, we have to notice that if we're going to stay in this work, which we must, uh, we can't do it in the old way of just going along to get along. We really have to know how to notice what gets us angry or depressed and how to come back from that. We need to know when to withdraw for a while. We need to know when to rest. We need to know when to really push right through and you know, make truthful statements to power. We need to know a lot and it's based on very high levels of self-awareness. And without that, you just get eaten alive these days. There's a wonderful book by Gonzalez where he talks about the five stages of being lost. And sometimes I'll use that in an organizational setting because the first, the first thing you do when you feel lost is to deny that you're lost. And then you look for any bit of information that will tell you, no, I'm not lost. You know, Something small and familiar and we just grasp onto that. And then you realize, no, I really am lost and you completely break down. So you lose all emotional, rational capacity. You're just, you know, in deep fear and even panic that you're, you're lost here. And then the only way you get out, and his, he's been working with mountaineers and boatsmen and, and people who've faced death, you know, in, in survival situations out, outdoors. The final stage is acceptance of the fact that we are truly lost. And he said, from that place, you're not lost, you're right here. I think one of the particular perils for people working on environmental issues is the sense of urgency. Because we don't know how much time we have left, so urgency is a very real and present issue. But as a dynamic that drives our behavior, it's extremely destructive. Because when we become urgent, we stop noticing, you know, the lack of synchronicities. We stop noticing whether something's becoming hard. Uh, we stop noticing, period, and we just drive, drive, drive ourselves because we have to achieve our goal right now because we don't know how much time we have. And um, in that drive, in that driven quality to our behavior, we stop noticing the people we're discarding, the people we're leaving behind. We stop noticing, deliberately 
don't want to deal with contrary opinions or people who say, you know, if you just wait a while, we might have a clearer understanding of what to do here. Well, we don't have time for that. So we end up pushing away a lot of people that we actually need to create a solution to the urgency. And so it's a very powerful dynamic that I completely empathize with when you're dealing with the planet. And at the same time, it's very destructive for not only our relationships, but for our openness to the kinds of information and difference and contrariness that would actually give us solutions. So it's rushing, you know, headlong into more disasters because we feel a sense of urgency and losing our relationships in the process. It's very problematic. So how to feel a sense of complete commitment to the planet and the state of, you know, life today and do that with a sense of presence rather than, you know, headlong, uh, headstrong, I know what to do and we have to do it now. <laughs> and that is just very, very destructive. So it doesn't seem like a solution to say present moment awareness, pay attention to relationships, be more inclusive, take time. It doesn't seem like a solution, but it is the only way to get a real solution.